Start recording. Okay. For some reason, it stopped recording partway through. It was broadcasting live the whole time, but it stopped recording. Um, we'll figure that out later. Um, uh, Fifteen twelve. Sorry, let me find this before I start talking. <coughs> okay. Um, there was a in addition to there being a fresh round of uh, people's loved ones, mothers, sons, wives, husbands, brothers, brothers, so on and so forth, children's fathers, um, being paraded around in orange uh, on their knees um, with a, a, a Islamic militant uh, uh, with a knife saying they're going to decapitate the person. Um, if their demands aren't met. In addition to there being a fresh round of that type of activity, and I think at least one or two defirmed, uh, confirmed uh, decapitations recently, um, at the same time as that's going on, and as there was this uh, Je suis uh, Chai uh, in France where they had millions of people descending to defend freedom of speech, even though um, the person in the Oval Office didn't go. Pretty much everybody else in the free world went to defend free speech uh, from uh, Islamic terrorists. Um, at the same time as all that is happening, uh, uh, Council on Arab Ameri uh, American Islamic Relations, I think it is, C-A-I-R, um, uh, was having some kind of rally in Texas where uh, on the steps of the state capitol, I don't know all of the details, so take all of this with a grain of salt as far as the, the nitty gritty details. The point I'm making, I'm very clear on. The details are, I'm not that clear on, I'm not that knowledgeable about them, and they aren't critical to the point. But there was some kind of thing going on where um, they wanted to uh, honor uh, Islam in this country and uh, bend over backwards to make sure people know that um, we're not against Muslims. You know, we welcome everybody in America as long as they're willing to live peaceably and stuff like that. Um, but in the midst of all that, I mean, they're doing that in a context where clearly Islamic terrorists are threatening to cut people's heads off um, uh, unless their uh, demands are met on tele, you know, on videotape, hor horrific death to see happening to one of your loved ones, trying to make it as unpleasant as possible. They're clearly doing it around their faith in Islam uh, in ways that are relatively consistent with the Quran, although I'm not a Quranic scholar. Um, uh, you know, this is in that kind of context. We are attempting to honor um, uh, Muslims in this country by having this event on the states of the, the the steps of the Texas State Capitol or something like that, um, and somebody made the the bold uh, request that any participants in this uh, rally, this this pro-Islamic rally, um, uh, would have to renounce terrorism uh, and uh, uh, and uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, and that was a highly controversial, uh, yeah, right, highly controversial, um, you know xenophobic, Islamophobic, whatever, uh, bigoted redneck thing for somebody to ask that, okay, we're not against Muslims. We're glad you're here in our country. Um, show that you're not a terrorist by, uh, you know, denouncing what's going on over there and show that you want to be an American by pledging allegiance to the flag. Everybody else who's gained their citizenship had to pledge allegiance to the flag at some point or another, <laughs> right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, um, but the, but the fact that that was very controversial and was seen as like bigotry and against the Muslims that they would want them to denounce terrorism and pledge allegiance to the flag, that's a big old red flag for me right there, right? So this event is going on with uh, Muslim clerics and, and imams and stuff. I don't know their uh, ecclesiastical org chart, so I don't know an imam from a shah, from a, a cleric or whatever, but the, the Muslim religious people in the garb and stuff are all gathered on the steps Bunches and bunches of supporters, um, uh, Muslims came for this and all this stuff. And one person out of the 150 million people in America that, that identify as either Protestant or Catholic, one out of 150 million people in America went to that event and grabbed the microphone away from the imam and said extremely bold stuff in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I don't agree with everything she said. This is where I get to Hitler. She's, she's not Hitler, obviously, but um, you can agree with some of what somebody does and not other stuff of what they said. So I don't agree with some of what she said theologically, um, like uh, she's claiming Texas for Jesus or America for Jesus or something like that. I don't think that's quite up to us to do as long as we're in a fallen world with free will. Um, but uh, we could certainly pray that America would be claimed for, you know, but I don't really think it's up to us to do that. But that's a minor detail. My point is the following. She said something. She grabbed the mic in the midst of an ocean of uh, Muslims that were not willing to denounce terrorism and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States on the Texas state capitol at the event where Texas government was rolling out the red carpet to them to show them we're not prejudiced against Muslims um, in a context where there are terrorists killing every day and stuff like that. One little woman out of 150 million people in this country that identify as Protestant or Catholic, got on a plane, flew to Texas. She was not local there. She had to fly hundreds of miles or whatever, uh, spend money to go and be at this event and grab the microphone away from these guys and, and barked like George Patton. She barked like Ted Nugent. I mean, she was like a drill sergeant, um, Newt Rockney or whomever, um, for you know 15 seconds or whatever till the cops dragged her off. And um, so uh, while I don't agree with everything she said, um, I would like to admonish all of us. I'm looking in the camera right now. I'm not looking right at you <laughs> behind the camera. Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera, yeah. And I'm pointing at myself right now. <laughs> I would like to admonish all of us to grow a pair. That's, that's not exactly a Christian thing to say, but I would love to see if, if half of the men in America that identify as either Protestant or Catholic had as much of a pair as this woman, Christine, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. It's Weck or Wyke or Wick or something. It's, it's W and several vowels and then CK. Christine Weck, uh, and if I'm butchering your pronunciation, Christine, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. If half of the men in America had a pair half the size of Christine Weck, there would not be any kind of terrorism making any kind of stronghold in this country with 150 million of us. Um, probably the guy in the Oval Office wouldn't be in there encouraging uh, gay marriage and killing babies and all the other stuff that he's encouraging and spitting on Israel and all that. You know, um, could I encourage us to grow a pair? That's, that's kind of all I really wanted to say and take a lesson from Christine Weck or Weick or however you pronounce it that was willing single-handedly, a little woman, she wasn't a big macho strapping guy. You know, we have some friends with Brewline and all that that have the muscles and the tats and all that. You can sort of imagine them being able to swagger. This was a little blonde haired woman um, flew a long, long way to grab the microphone away from these Muslims in front of all the Muslims and the media and the news cameras and the cops and everything on the state capitol and, and bark a message in there about Jesus, about righteousness. Could we grow a pair? Could we be more like Christine? Um, in response, by the way, and you can see this all over Facebook, if you guys check out Facebook, in response to what Christine did, many, many people are denouncing what she did. Christians are denouncing Christine Wick for going and offending the Muslims by grabbing the mic and speaking in the name of Jesus. Um, right? Thank you. No, I mean, right? Right? Thank you. So I mean, a, if I'm if I'm too cowardly to step up to the mic, I kind of got nothing to say to her, right? If she has more of a pair than I, if she's more of a man than I am, and she's willing to go fly hundreds of miles to step up in a, an ocean of, huh? She came from Germany. She did this in Berlin, too. <laughs> I didn't know she was coming from Germany. I thought it was from Kansas or something. Are you serious? That's funnier yet. Okay. <laughs> so, right. So, it came from Germany to do this. If, if, if she's that much of a man, and I'm not enough of a man to step up to the mic, I kind of shouldn't be throwing stones at her and criticizing, you know, the great evangelist Dwight L. Moody. Um, T.L. Moody, uh, uh, some woman was criticizing him. Mr. Moody, I don't like the way you evangelize people. And, and, you know, he won many people to Christ. He wrote many books. And he was, I mean, he was an incredible, humble man of God, very fruitful. This one, I don't like the way you evangelize, Mr. Moody. And, uh, oh, okay. Well, how do you evangelize, ma'am? Oh, I don't evangelize, she said. <laughs> and he thought for a moment. He goes, well, I like my way better. <laughs> 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 you know, any of us that doesn't have enough of a pair to step up to the mic, like Christine Weck or Weikar would pronounce it, we kind of don't have anything to say to her, I would think. But, but moreover, if we're going to criticize her, as many people did on Facebook, <laughs> at least we couldn't be, we, we could think a little bit and read the word before embarrassing ourselves. 
because one person, and this was a general sentiment that they echoed, oh, you're offending people with that message. Um, you're not going to attract people. And, 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 and they were saying it uh, you know, snidely and derisively and condescendingly as though they were really the mature Christians and she was the immature Christian for flying from Germany and shooting her mouth off in the midst of this questionable gathering. Um, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, I have nothing against Muslims. God wants us to love everybody, right? And I don't assume that every Muslim is a terrorist. I'm not, I'm not uh, knee-jerk like that. But if they were not willing to renounce what's going on, if they were not willing to pledge allegiance to the flag, then that's an awfully murky uh, gathering of people. It's not clear that it's peace-loving American Muslims um, if they're not willing to renounce the, the, the stuff that's going on over there, right? So that's real murky. So, Right? Thank God for Christine that she was willing to go and brave that and speak up. But people are looking down their noses at her as though they are the mature ones and she's the immature one scolding her, uh, saying, saying uh, you know, that's, that's going to offend people. That's not going to that's not going to attract anybody with a behind message like that. Right? right? Behind a keyboard. Thank you. They didn't go there in person. They didn't. No, thank you. Right, 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 right. Facebook rage behind the keyboards. She can't punch them in the nose <laughs> as long as they're doing it from the comfort of their own, right? So Christine Weck, while I may not agree with everything she said, um, she's in good company in the following regard. So if you brought your Bibles really briefly, um, and if you didn't, you can look it up later. Um, <coughs> Matthew chapter 15 We'll start at the beginning for a little context. I was just going to, uh, uh, I was just going to give you a couple of verses, like 12 and 13, but uh, um, Matthew 15, for context, you could start at the beginning. Matthew chapter 15. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? Now, these are people scolding Jesus and his disciples like they were the, the righteous guys, right? Like they were scolding Christine. Um, for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you yourselves transgress the commandment, transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? So he was suggesting they loved their own opinions more than they actually loved the law of God, the word, right? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever I have that would help you has been <coughs> given to God, he is not to honor his father or mother. Yes, ma'am. And by this, uh, verse 6, and by this you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. And lest anybody think that Jesus' primary beef with the Pharisees was that they were legalistic or hypocritical, that was not the root of his issue with them. The root of his issue with them was that they loved their own opinions more than they loved the law of God. The passage of Isaiah that Jesus is quoting here elaborates in Isaiah, if we went there, which we're not going to take time for now, but if we went there, the passage that he's uh, uh, quoting elaborates in Isaiah and suggests that the real issue is loving one's own opinion more than you love the law of God. So there are many people that think they're free of Pharisaism because they're not legalistic or they're free of Pharisaism because they're not hypocritical and they admit their sins or whatever, but they still love their own opinions more than they love the law of God. They look at a Christine Weck or however you pronounce her name and they decide their judge and jury to say she was wrong to offend these Muslims when if they knew the law of God, they would get to uh, verse 12 over here. Then the disciples, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Jesus goes on to slam the Pharisees more, right? Then the disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard that statement? <laughs> the, Pharise uh, the, the, the disciples now, not the Pharisees, the disciples, the loyal ones, the, the born again ones, as far as we know, they scolded Jesus. They looked down their nose at him, judge and jury, condescendingly scolded Jesus for offending somebody were offended when they heard this statement. Um, I could go on, but, th but that's the basic point is Christine, however you pronounce her last name, is in, in this regard, is in good company with Jesus for having been scolded by 
Christians that love their own opinions more than they love the word of God and think they are in a position to judge her and look down their noses at her because she said something offensive to Muslims who would not renounce terrorism and who would not pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Um, they, and they, they obviously love their opinions more than they love the word of God because if they knew the word of God, they would know Jesus was not afraid to offend when the time calls for it. Uh, the Great Commission is not to gather flies. It is to make disciples, right? Um, they were saying, well, her, her means of gathering flies was not very effective. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really struck by the thing with Christine and the, the fact that there are people, I was going to pray for a whole host of people. There are people we pray for pretty much every week here at Motor Gospel Chapel. And I just had this really strong feeling. I couldn't think of one person. And we have some problems. We're not denying that we have some serious, serious issues. I couldn't think of one person amongst us, amongst any of my friends or family or Facebook people all over the world that are my friends, that have a loved one on his knees right now with a knife to his throat um, about to be made a spectacle of. I can't even imagine what that would feel like to see that with one of them. None of us has much of a problem compared to something like that. And I felt like God said, don't even pray for anybody else. Just pray for those that are in that situation. So between that and the Christine thing, it was just really on my heart about this. So in closing, um, you know, if I haven't already uh, uh, admonished us enough about growing a pair, at least as much as Christine did, um, I, I, I have a, a, favorite <laughs> a favorite compare contrast. Um, that I like to do. Physicists are big on uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Uh, eigenvectors are things that are um, pure, you might say. So pure red would be an eigenva uh, eigenvalue or an eigenvector. Pure blue, pure yellow. There is no red in pure blue. There is no blue in pure red. There is no blue in pure yellow, et cetera, et cetera. And then you make a spectrum by having the pure red at one end, the pure yellow at the other end, and uh, a continuum of orange like that. So I'm fond of using really extreme things to compare and contrast. Even though most of life is not at either end of the spectrum, um, it helps if you have these eigenvectors because then you can, you can build something. You can break a color down if you understand red, blue, and yellow, for example. Um, uh, into its components, even though most of life is not pure, neither pure red, nor pure yellow, nor pure blue. So one of my favorite compare contrasts is kind of applicable here. And that is a comparison with two things. I, I like to say people, I'm leaving them with two words. I have just two words to leave people with tonight. And those two words are leadership and chicken ship. <laughs> <laughs> That's our choice. <laughs> Leadership, chicken ship. And people are living and dying behind this. In America, they're going to be living and dying behind this. They're living and dying behind this in other countries right now. Leadership or chicken ship. Chicken ship follows the crowd, whereas leadership follows its convictions. Chicken ship places a high priority on popularity, whereas leadership doesn't lose any sleep over popularity or unpopularity. When it's time to take a stand, Christine, when it's time to take a stand, chicken ship runs and hides within the flock. When leadership is called upon to take a stand, Christine Wick, or however you pronounce her last name, chicken ship doesn't flock around. So my advice in closing to us and everybody watching this, follow your convictions. Don't lose any sleep over unpopularity. And above all else, when it's time to take a stand, never, ever flock around. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's break for dinner. Uh, those of you at home, thank you for joining us. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>